Of Curry and Tom Curry. Uh, we're at the uh, Winthrop um, E.B. Newton School, the Clock Tower Gallery, um, in the, it's actually the E.B. Newton Cultural Center now. And uh, they have a wonderful exhibit that is on display right now for the month of September called A Family Affair. And I'm going to ask them to explain a little bit about how this show got together and um, maybe they can help us out. Well, um, Joanne Hillman, who runs the gallery, asked if I wanted to do an exhibit here. And I said, yeah, that would be a great idea, but I have a lot of members of my family and Tom's family who are artists and have work to display, and she thought that was a great idea. So I went about asking a bunch of people in my family if they would help put something in, and sure enough, they did. I didn't get everyone, but I got most of them. <laughs> Yes, I'll ask you a little later to explain who the other people are um, that are included in the show. But right now, let's look at some of your work and Tom's work. Uh, let's start with Tom because he's his piece is the first, the first in line here. Um, Tom, do you want to tell us what this piece is um, and how you s came about drawing, drawing it? it? Okay, uh, it actually um, is uh, artwork that I did uh, for a jazz record album. Uh, I. Back in the uh, si 70s, I owned my own record company, and I worked for several others doing record covers. And that's a, a photograph that I took. It's from a photograph that I took of a guy named Gary Chandler, who was a trumpet player for Lou Donaldson. And um, I was going to use the photograph, and then I said, well, let me give it a shot and see what, what I can do in terms of doing a charcoal of that portrait. And I came up with that, and then I couldn't decide which one to use. Do I use? So I sent both to the company, and I said, "You guys choose," because I can't. Mm -hmm. And I forget how it worked out, but the, both the photograph and the charcoal uh, portrait made the uh, record jacket. So Tom, I know that you've been interested in jazz music for a while, and you have some radio programs, um, but I never knew you drew. Where Where does your art background come from? Well, I. My father was an artist. He went to the museum school, and uh, he had a studio a short after he graduated on Newbury Street, but that time he was actually selling and making jewelry. Uh, he later on had an art studio in the, uh, in the back, uh, back bay somewhere. Uh, interesting story, if I could. Um, back in the late 20s, uh, movies were made both in Hollywood and also in Long Island City, New York. And then after the crash, uh, everybody decided to move to Hollywood. My father at the time was a scenic artist for Fox Films in Long Island City. And he was working with his buddy when they got their notices that Fox was going to reorganize and go out to Hollywood. So his friend turned to him and he said, well, Tucker, he said, I, uh, I think I'm gonna go out go back to Hollywood and uh, start a little company. He said, I've made quite a bit of money out of my two-wheeler. And he said, would you like to come out and be my head animator? Well, my father had just met my mother, 
and uh, in up near White Plains. And my father thought about it, and then he said no. And of course, if you haven't guessed already, uh, that was Walt Disney. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, uh, Walt did go out, and as you know, he made a success. Uh, my f my father never would have lasted more than about probably three weeks because he couldn't work with anybody. He had to be self-employed. So I, I used to kid him as a, I, when I was a kid, I used to say, Dad, why didn't you take the job? I could have been a beach bum. <laughs> and, and he said, uh, he said, well, if I did, you wouldn't be around. And that was a very good point, so I shut up about that. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, I actually started this because back in the early 60s, I bought myself a Nikon F, which was the camera of choice. I was going to jazz clubs and photographing um, jazz musicians when they appeared in Boston or even other cities when I was going. And then I got the idea of maybe doing charcoals from, and it just, just came to me. I just said, let me try doing charcoals of my own work. So I, during the 60s, I did a number of, of, of charcoals. And then when we started our record company back in the early 70s with, uh, with Bob Porter, an old friend of mine who was a, uh, a, 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 what they call an A&R man, a record producer. Uh, we needed artwork, so I did the artwork, and the early covers have my drawings, and then as, as we repressed, I, we got period photographs. So if you have a picture of Cootie Williams that I did, you got the first pressing. Hey, thank you for that interesting story. That's great. While we're talking about your father, maybe we'll just point out your father's painting that's right here. Okay. All right, Tom, please tell us about your father and his work and, and what kind of artist he was to begin with. Well, he, he painted in all mediums. Uh, he did oils. Um, from did he go to art school? Yes, he went to museum school. Uh, and graduated, and as I mentioned before, he opened up a studio uh, for jewelry, and then uh, he had a studio in, in the back bay for uh, where he painted. And uh, as long as I can remember, he was always downstairs painting. Um, he turned to watercolor probably sometime around the time I was born, which was around 1940. Um, and he kind of he kind of stayed with watercolor. He liked to use that medium. Uh, re regards to this picture here, it's kind of funny. Uh, there were, he was he actually did four of these in a row, and uh, he would what he used to do was he would make them up and give them away to uh, for a wedding presents of family members or what friends or what have you. Nice so, wedding yeah, what a nice so, wedding present! Uh, I, this particular when I uh, this. I chose this one to keep for us because what, what he used to do would be he'd uh, call me to, uh, to come downstairs because he wanted my advice, and, and then I'd go down and I, I would look at what he did, and then they'd say, what do you think? And then I'd say, well, maybe you want to do a little something over here or whatever. I'd give him, you know, he would ask my opinion, so I'd give it to him, and then I'd trot back to whatever I was doing, and but as I said, th there were four of these. They're not identical, but you know, that's the way he used to paint. It was basically a production line at times. Beautiful. The color really has lasted all these years, too. A beautiful, natural well, uh, watercolor painting. Very nice. So, Tom, can you tell us when you first got into art and how you first got into art? Well, actually, my, well, when I was about six or seven years old, my father showed me perspective drawing, and I played around with it. But when I was around 12, uh, one summer, I decided I wanted to try watercolors, and I happened to have a book. My father had a, a, some watercolors, and I copied them uh, during that summer. And I was going into the eighth grade, and the, my, the f first day, my, the eighth grade teacher said, I want everyone tomorrow to bring in something that they drew over the summer. So I brought in this painting, all right? And she looked at me and she said, when I brought mine in, she said, Tom Curry, you're a liar. You did not do this painting. I know your father's an artist and you didn't do this painting. And he never even touched a brush. So I was, that really upset me at the time. And, uh, but you did do this. 
Yeah, Is I did the, that. Oh, yeah, and and the painting. And, oh, and the painting. And the and the painting that yeah, yeah the, but mm -hmm. the painting that I think was a it was a French impressionist oh, that I copied. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah, nice. yeah. So Thanks, yeah. Hi, Brenda. So now we're going to ask you a little bit about how you get started and maybe where your genes in the art pool came from. Well, I believe it came from my father. Um, he did not go to art school. He just took courses over a couple of years, I think, and this is one of the paintings we've saved that's in our house. And your father's name is? Samuel Cadiff, mm -hmm. and he always kept his art supplies in a cabinet in the hallway. And until we were like seven or eight years old, he wouldn't let us go near them. It was a surprise. Okay. And then we got old enough to paint, he would let us use some of the paint. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that was really uh, an event that we all shared. Um, and as a result of his interest and our interest in art, my brother went to art school, I went to art school, uh, and we became a very artistic family. So I have aunts that paint, cousins that paint, and you'll see as we walk around the room all the different people who are involved, and it wasn't even all the people. I just, I have an aunt who did all the drawings and uh, diagrams for uh, Yale University Medical School, but she is quite elderly now, and she's not well, and I wasn't able to get up there and get one of her pictures, but. Yeah. And her son and her daughter went to art school, too. Mm -hmm. But they live in New Haven, so it was a little hard to get. Yeah. Now, you were saying that this was a model that posed for your father? Yeah. Everyone thinks maybe it's a priest or somebody, but it was just a model in one of the classes. Mm -hmm. That's what he told us. Nice. Right. So Brenda, tell us a little bit about your um, your schooling in art. You know, when you went to college and how you came about maybe painting like this. I went to Mass Art, and I majored in painting of all things. And I went on to after graduating from college, I went to San Francisco College of Arts and Crafts and uh, waitress my way through because didn't have any money. And that was after Mass Art? After Mass Art. Right. We took a, a girlfriend and I took a train from Boston to San Francisco and stopped all along the way. <laughs> it was very interesting. Wow. Especially since we didn't have any money. We slept at night and got off during the day. <laughs> and then I started painting with oils first. This is an oil painting I did many years ago. And I really love flowers, and I have gardens and everything, so that's one of the flower paintings. There are others in the exhibit here, and a lot more in my home, and things I've given away. I notice this has a very loose and free style to it. Um, do you feel like this is you know, the way you like to paint more often? No, I like both. I, you can see the painting there on the other end. The flowers is tight. <laughs> we'll look Just at that. Loose. No, I try to do everything. Every year I try a different medium, a different thing to do. Great, I, I just great. can't stay in one medium. I'll say this. So I said, it looks like there's <laughs> layers here, Brenda. There are layers here, and I kept putting more and more layers on, and I, uh, I saw parts that I didn't like, so I just put more stuff on and more stuff on. I, I just kept going. I think it still needs more. <laughs> What I love is your intuition about the work. You know, you just like you like it, so you keep going. I just keep going. <laughs> so Brenda, I want to point out the wide variety that to people, so they can see your wide variety. You were saying how I was asking you if you liked painting loose and free because the other painting was loose and free. This one is very controlled and very realistic. Do you want to talk about this little beautiful little painting of a bird? Well, thank you. It's a, my bird. And uh, what medium? Watercolor and pencil. Mm -hmm. And I do enjoy doing a tight drawing, and especially of something like an animal, which I've done lots of animals. And uh, I particularly like this one because it was my bird. Mm -hmm. Mike. It's lovely, very lovely. And he flew away. Mm -hmm. Someone opened the door and he left us. Oh. <laughs> That's very sad. <laughs> So, of course, uh, as an artist, m most of your work has a lot of meaning to you, like your bird and your um, paintings of other things. I um, want to talk about this. This, is, I know, is a scratch board. And for those who don't know, scratch board is a coated board. And you take a tool and you scratch into it and reveal the white. 
and it's very detailed and very well done. Again, this is an animal, Luke, you were just talking about. Um, you love to draw animals. So Want to tell us about this animal? This is our dog, Emma, that we loved. And uh, Tom took a photograph of it. And uh, after, the, after Emma died, he showed me the photograph. And I said, I have to do a scratch board of it. And uh, I had just finished some dental work. And the dentist gave me all these wonderful <laughs> tools to use because they're very pointed, mm -hmm. and so that really helped. And then I did the scratch board of the owl, mm -hmm. and my nine-year-old grandson said, owls don't have such fat necks. You made that wrong. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So I do like the scratch board. Uh, I find it an interesting medium, and a lot of people don't know about it, but I think it was popular way back when, and now it's getting some popularity again. Yeah, it is. It's coming back. It's coming back. Brenda, I find this piece very interesting. This is much different than most of the other work in the gallery. Um, would you like to tell us about this medium and, and uh, the subject matter here? I became entranced with turtles and did a lot of drawings of turtles. And I was down my cellar where I store a lot of stuff that I think might be interesting at some point in my studio. And I found all these interesting recycled things that I used. So as you can see, I have keys, I have a carousel, I have broken glass, I have a watch in the middle, mm -hmm. and shells all around. So it's kind of a beachy, recycled, repurposed. Like the, the googly eyes. It's the googly eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just entranced with all this uh, stuff that people throw away. and. Uh, I decided to do this for our art festival, the Winter Bot Festival. So here's an interesting piece, Brenda. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? When our son Ian was in Winthrop High School, he was in the band, and he became entranced with playing his pink guitar. And so I couldn't resist doing a portrait of him with our cat in the background. And if you can see up close, there's pictures, photos of him in all different ways and all different hairdos uh, all around as part of the frame. So I kept it because I really felt it was part of our life back then. And now he's in his 40s. <laughs> what medium is this one? Acrylic. All right, so I'm going to ask Brenda, what, tell us about this wall here with all of these different um, pieces. Well, at the uh, start over there, my brother's landscape, and he did it with uh, oil crayons, and he went to museum school. He's a graduate museum school. In fact, he's having an exhibit in a brewery next month. And his name is? Earl Cadiff. The next picture, the small green one, is our grandson, who's age nine, who lives in North Carolina. And I thought that was really a special drawing for that age, and I really loved it. And my sister, Susan Cadiff, these are her grandchildren, these two end pictures. That's her granddaughter, who's age 12, and her grandson, who's 15, who uh, did that drawing. And the one up there is Subnautica. My brother's daughter's husband, they, live in San, they both live in San Francisco, and he is an artist for video games, and it's called Subnautica. And he does all the drawings uh, for the game. It's quite popular and uh, sells a lot. Beats me. I don't know anything about video games. But my nine-year-old grandson thought he died and went to heaven when he visited and gave him the game. <laughs> That's my sister's granddaughter, age 12. She had, when she was visiting, she had a whole book of these drawings of uh, girls with dresses. She was interested in fashion, she told me. <laughs> so she said, which one do you want? So I picked that one. There had to be 25 of them, but I said, <laughs> I like that one. And then we framed it on wallpaper to make it a little more interesting. Yeah. This is a pencil drawing of uh, my sister's grandson, who's age 15. I thought it was really a beautiful drawing for that age group. Can you talk a little bit about who that's 
I don't really know. They live in Rochester, New York. Uh, but he does do a lot of traveling because his family travels a lot. And you'll see his father is a professor of industrial design at Rochester, RIT, Rochester Institute. And he just published a book, which is in the other room, which I'll show you. So they have an interest in art. <laughs> Brenda, we see that you've gotten into um, painting on furniture and, and canes. Um, and probably any items. We'll get to some of the others in a minute, too. Um, why don't you talk and tell us about how you started painting on, on these um, functional items. Well, a friend of mine, oops, I have to hold the microphone. A friend of mine was doing painted furniture. And he said, come over to my studio in Somerville and see how I do it. I said, okay, we'll try something new any, any time. I went over and I spent a class with them. And then I went home and did all this furniture. And then the grandchildren were growing up and I made rocking chairs for them. And I painted this particular table, which I kept because I really liked the drawing and the painting I did of it. So that's upstairs in our house. And then I did canes. For I had surgery, and I needed a cane. When I went from crutches, I went to a cane. I painted my cane, and they were so popular, I started painting for people. So I have, these are some of my favorites. And uh, $35, I'll paint you a cane, any kind you want. <laughs> Oh, yes, I had these things, so I, I couldn't resist Salvatore Dali on a cheese board, if anyone's interested. So she's <laughs> painting and collaging on, on that. that, right? right. Yeah. So these are all painted. That's the mm -hmm. only collage. This particular one, which seems to be a favorite of a lot of people, and I understand Betty Boop is really in style again. Uh, isn't she from the 20s or something? So several people wanted Betty Boop, so I did a bunch of Betty Boop canes. That happens to be Beverly's, which I took back for the exhibit. <laughs> this is my favorite, the one I use, because I happen to like purple and blue. And then a lot of people like black and white. And then I did one for a, a, a guy who uh, golfs. I made a golf one and the flower ones. I made all kinds. I still have a bunch more to make. Uh, so. They're not so hard to paint, so it doesn't take up a lot of room. <laughs> what kind of paint do you use on these, Brenda? Um, acrylic. acrylic. Just acrylic paint, yeah. And uh, they're very detailed. Very detailed, yes. I get a little carried away. Yeah, I think it was. Brenda, I'm intrigued by this painting. Can you say anything about it? <laughs> well, I really can't say very much about it because I was down in a studio painting and it just got inspired and I just kept going and I absolutely have no idea why I did it or how, even how I did it. It just happened. So sometimes <laughs> those are the best, the intuitive paintings that just come out of us. Um, and it's uh, acrylic, you said? Acrylic on, and pencil. On paper? On paper. Mm -hmm. Green-eyed lady. Green -eyed uh, the woman with green eyes. Yep. <laughs> So in this room, we have uh, a lot of uh, different family members as well um, hanging on this wall, especially. Do um, you want to tell us a little bit about this drawing here? This is a drawing my sister Susan Owen did. Uh, she lived up in Ithaca, New York, and took some courses on life drawing. And when I said I wanted to have something to put in the exhibit, she showed me a, a newsprint book with all these 10-minute charcoal drawings, and I picked this one out. Uh, because I thought this was one of the better ones. And uh, I think it worked out well. This is our 12-year-old granddaughter who lives in North Carolina. She did this in a very short period of time using coffee. So I was so entranced. I said, can we please use it for the exhibit? And she said, okay. But don't sell it. I said, okay. <laughs> Coffee, coffee in a brush. It was hanging in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. That she, they, it must have been a little class or something, and she did it. Mm -hmm. I know. Too bad she's not interested in art. 
<laughs> She's a volleyball player. <laughs> so here's a beautiful little painting, Brenda, that I'm always intrigued with when I see it. Um, I thought it was a, a drawing or a pencil drawing, but what is it? Tell me. You told me it was something different. It's a bird I made up, and it's acrylic paint and pencil. And I did it a while ago, and I kept it because I liked it. And I had it in the windowsill for a long time, unframed, and it got wet. <laughs> and then I pretended it happened that it's water that the bird was in. But, <laughs> 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 but in fact, that wasn't what happened. <laughs> so, it's cute. so this is a very different piece. Can you tell us about this one and, and who made this? So this is my brother's daughter, Amelia Strader. Her husband is the one that's the videographer uh, in the other room that does the drawings of underwater things. She has a business called Go Go Crafts, where she used recycled materials uh, f and does libraries and different venues where they recycle all and make all kinds of projects in one afternoon, felting and all kinds of interesting things. They're really beautiful products that people leave, leave with. And so we all try and collect stuff like she likes old uh, sweaters, woolen sweaters that she can take apart. And uh, when we find some interesting things, we send it to her. So here it looks like we have some pencil drawings, Brenda. Um, Want to talk to us a little bit about those? Uh, these I did quite a long time ago. It's my foot and my hand. My foot looks the same. I recognize it by the toe. <laughs> so I saved them because I, I don't know really why, but I like them, so I saved them, and I just framed it for this exhibit. They were down the cellar in a pile. <laughs> These look very different. I know they're a printing process called lithography, and lithography is when you actually paint um, or use a special crayon, waxy crayon, on stone, and then you print, you put the ink on that, and you print from the stone. Um, it's a long process. But So tell us a little bit about your subject matter here, Brenda, and um, how you came about making these. Well, these are done quite a while ago. And um, there were lithographs, and working on a stone is a lot different than working on canvas. And I think I got a little carried away, but I liked them, so I did this without a face. Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I was inspired by him. Mm -hmm. And this was I Will Praise Thee, for I am fearful and wonderfully alive of, from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this was just a man and a woman and without a face just in general. And I don't do them anymore because it's a very complicated process. <laughs> yes. So in essence, you're drawing on the stone, and right. they're, very, they're very textural that way because they have that drawing quality, but yet they're and like kind of without have to faces. And, and, <laughs> and everything. Yes. It's complicated. Right. So this is a photograph that uh, my nephew, my sister's son did, he travels all over the world, and he was in Nepal for a year, and this is one of his photographs that he left with us. Very interesting. It looks like there's a reflection there. I think there is. I, I, I'm not sure. He, he's out of the country, and I wasn't able to find him to ask for more details. <laughs> okay. Well, this has got to be one of the most interesting pieces in the show. Um, I remember when you made it, Brenda, for our art festival. We had just started a new category, Recycled Reborn. And uh, Brenda had gotten a donation of some materials from, um, where did you Costco. say, Costco, Four. and uh, donated them actually to me at the school and then asked for one back because she had this great idea for this uh, collage. So tell us about it. Well, I was down the cellar again. And uh, and then I found a whole bunch of photographs, and I decided that I'd make a collage out of the form that we had. They were bathing suit forms, I believe, at the f originally. And so I, I glued on all kinds of photographs of everyone in the family. And then I put my, head, my face on top, and then my brother-in-law said, why don't you light up the boobs? 
<laughs> but we haven't gotten to that yet. So it caused a lot of controversy. You can look at my husband Tom as a young man with a crew cut. <laughs> 1958. Yeah, we don't know what to do with photographs these days. People only use... Uh, I see something that, that is very symbolic of you, Brenda. It says, celebrate life in here. And I find that in all of your work, you're always celebrating color and line and texture. And in here, you're celebrating your family and and all of the things that make you happy, celebrate life. Oh, thank you. Right. I try to do that. I see you even got peacocks in there. <laughs> <laughs> I see this is um, an ode to Frida Kahlo, um, Frida Kahlo being a um, Mexican painter from the 1930s to 40s. Um, why don't you tell us how this came about? Well, it evolved similarly to this, a lot of others. It was time for the art festival in Winthrop, and I had to get something ready for it. And I went, went down and I saw all these beautiful big flower pictures. And so I made a face because I was inspired by Frida, although I see I, she needs more eyebrows than <laughs> she has. I'll, I'll, I'll attend to that next. <laughs> Uh, so I made it an ode to Frida because I love her as an artist. I thought she was a wonderful, interesting artist and did a lot of interesting things similar. So that was my ode to her. And this is um, oil paint and, or is it acrylic? Acrylic. Acrylic with collage, yeah. so the flowers and the images here a collage. Oh, and her eyeballs are collage too. They Very actually cool. move back and forth. If you yeah. <laughs> All right. Very nice. So, Brenda, I understand this is um, your newest piece, your most current piece, and this was the inspiration. Can you see this, Barbara? Or the, for the um, flyer, the family affair, to advertise the show. Um, so tell us about this piece. I've always been in trance with peacocks. Back when I was in college, I did this giant wood block of a peacock in many colors. And, but I lost the wood block in my many travels from the <laughs> college to here. So I decided to revisit peacocks again. And the peacock feathers are so beautiful because they're my favorite colors, the cool mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do a peacock in collage. And it has real peacock feathers in it. Yeah, here's and the real and then, of course, I had to do something a little different, so I put an eyeball <laughs> so the peacock could see you. And then I made cards, mm -hmm. uh, which are on sale here at the gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I got Is peacockitis. <laughs> Is it acrylic paint? Really? Acrylic paint, mm -hmm. yes. Um, using oil paint these days is a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot more, so I'm down to acrylics. I love the way you have the detailed, these are collage, I realized, yes. too, the detailed cutouts, and then integrated it in with the acrylic paint. It's really very successful. Colorful. Colorful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is my cousin, Alberta Nudell. Uh, she grew up with us in Morton Street, Dorchester, and her father and my father were brothers. And uh, it was a family house, three-decker house that we all lived in. And we went from floor to floor, everybody intermingled. And she moved to Holliston when she got married and decided to take watercolor classes at the senior center. So she goes once a week to the senior center in Holliston. And she's been producing a lot of beautiful watercolors. She was a nurse before in her previous life, and now she's a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my sister's son, Josh Owen, lives in Rochester, New York, 
and he's a professor of industrial design, and he just published this beautiful book of all his uh, designs he's done, and he's the head of the department, and he gave me this book t to keep, and I was thrilled. And I watched him grow up. He went to Cornell Art School, and then he went to Rhode Island School of Design. And you said he was a minimalist? He's a minimalist, so minimalist you can't believe. <laughs> and you can see, I, I, it's too hard to see the designs, but you can see some of them. The cover is white because he's a minimalist. <laughs> <laughs> Lenses for Design. Lenses for Design by Josh Owen. See how little the name is? Mm. <laughs> Very tiny. Very tiny. <laughs> um, Brenda, I noticed you included a piece by Beverly Brody Barasano, one of our uh, founding members of the Winter Bat Association. Do you want to tell us why you chose to include her in your family affair? Because she is part of the family. She grew up with us, and she and I went to Mass Art together, and we started the Winthrop Art Association together, and so I felt that she needed to be included as part of the family. She knows my family better than most people. And this is one of her uh, Chincole um, prints, a monotype print. It's a, you, of course, yeah, include. very nice. A uh, monotype is a print that you print on, again, on a uh, different surface. Um, you sh I th she does jelly prints, yes. right? This is a jelly, um, a gel, like a, a Knox gelatin plate. Almost you like make, jello. yeah, jello, and then you put the ink and the paint um, on it, and you make a print from it. You put the paper on it and make a print. This is a very interesting collage, Brenda. Um, it looks like it's probably again your family. You're you're so um, you know into you know expressing your love for your family through your artwork. It's wonderful to see. Um, tell us a little bit about this collage. I made this a long time ago for my sister to have her in her house when she left Boston to go to Ithaca, New York, and I wanted her to have things that she could remember us all by because at that point we didn't have phones, mm -hmm. iPhones and everything. <laughs> so included is my mother and father's when they got married, my mother's naturalization papers, the kids when they're small, my brothers and sisters, the kids taking dancing lessons, uh, all kinds of relatives and sayings and uh, naturalization papers I tore up wow. and uh, included and all kinds of family events that she could remember. What a great way to save the memorabilia that we all collect um, and put it into a work of art. Very nice. Um. <coughs> all right. Recently you took a trip to India, right? <laughs> a long trip, a as long I trip. recall. Right. Um, and this looks like it's inspired, this piece looks like it's inspired by your trip. Tell us about it. Tom and I and my sister and brother-in-law went to India for three weeks, or was it four weeks? Oh, five weeks, he tells me, uh, because our son and daughter-in-law and the kids were living there for two years, so we went for the whole time. And this is a influence of it. It's an elephant that we ran on, all of us, and so I cut it up and I pasted on all the people that went on this trip. So there's all the people... Tom is sitting in the front of the elephant and the two kids in the back. And Ta uh, me, my sister, my brother-in-law, we're all on the elephant. Mm -hmm. I just thought it would be fun. That's great. Right, Tom, so your, your um, thing to do most often now is um, to take photographs of these fabulous uh, blues singers. Uh, do you want to tell us about some of these singers and how you caught these wonderful photographs? Sure. Well, actually, it goes back to when I was taking photographs back in the 60s. Uh, what happened was I had an almost 30-year hiatus because when I was seven, uh, in 1970, I lost my hearing as a result of uh, going to a um, recording studio. And therefore, I couldn't go into nightclubs to shoot anymore. But back in the late 90s, I decided to give it another shot. <laughs> another shot. And so uh, some of these shots are taken uh, from the late 90s to up to recently. Uh, this was, uh, this is Anna Popovich, 
uh, it was taken at the Gloucester Blues Festival a couple of years ago. Uh, why don't we just walk, walk over this way. This is a friend of mine. I got to, uh, his name is Houston Person. He and I go back to Connolly's in 1964 when I first photographed him. And I shot this last year at Zoomix. Uh, and uh, we both have gotten a little grayer and older. Uh, we're about the same age. <laughs> the next one down here, this is one of the, this is James Cotton. Um, remember that name. Okay, well, <laughs> this may be the last performance he did before he, he retired. Of course, he had lost his voice due to throat cancer, but I took this at the Pennsylvania Blues Festival uh, with a, a high-powered uh, uh, telephoto lens uh, because all he could do was play harmonica at that time. And the next shot we have, this is uh, my Mighty Mike Welsh and Mike Ledbetter, they were the hit of the Gloucester Blues Festival this year. Um, it's just an action shot. I happen to like the composition. I thought it was kind of interesting. So, um, and we'll just go down here. This was taken, again, several years ago. This is Shamika Copeland, and uh, she was performing in the first Gloucester Blues Festival uh, several years ago. and. Um, I managed to get that shot before the lights disappeared. And if we can go over here. Uh, we're only going to do a couple of more, because I have 24 of these, and uh, I think your, your battery's going to run out before. I, but I, if you see this gentleman around town, this is Max Whiting, and a uh, good friend of mine, and wonderful guy, and a wonderful bassist. And uh, this was uh, taken at Zoomix uh, two years ago. Uh, he he came with a uh, quintet and a vocalist. So uh, this is this shot is of course Max playing, and the next one you're going to see is the singer who who came with him, which is right over the here. Uh, I I love the shot. Uh, th this is a Falani Haynes. She's a local vocalist and a local uh, uh, activist in the in the Roxbury community. But she has a, just a wonderful voice, and Max was lucky enough to get her uh, to come with his quintet and perform at Zoomix. So, uh, and as I said, the, the uh, uh, photographs line the corridor. As I said, there are about 24 mixed jazz and blues photographs. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Well, we'd like to thank you for um, giving us some insight into your artwork and your family's um, legacy here and uh, how everyone has taken part in some way in the arts. Um, thank you, Brenda Curry and Tom Curry for um, joining us and um, giving this wonderful tour of the gallery. Well, thank you, and uh, I hope you come by and see the work or call me and I'll sell you a cane or a card. <laughs> <laughs> And Tom will tell you a story. Right. <laughs> <laughs>